Okay. Let's go up and have a look at the first site. When was this cut? Um, it was 10 years ago, 2001. We're here um, near Campbell River, British Columbia, on Vancouver Island, uh, located adjacent to the Snowden uh, demonstration forest. And we're in the um, STEMS uh, demonstration project. And we're here talking with uh, Dr. Sue Grayson, soil microbiologist at the University of British Columbia. Sue, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about the role that soil uh, organisms play in forest ecosystems? Yeah, well, they're a vital component. The soil's alive. It's just teeming with billions of organisms. If you take a, a teaspoon of soil, there's more organisms in that teaspoon than there are people on planet Earth. Billions of organisms. They're really vital for recycling nutrients, um, helping the trees to grow. They provide um, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur for the growth of the trees. And they're also vital um, because they are involved in the production and consumption of the gases which control the global climate. So they're really vital. And soil is our most precious non-renewable resource. It takes millions of years to form. Um, so we must take care of the soil. Could you maybe tell us a little bit more about the effects of uh, living versus dead trees on a retention site like this? Um, well, the living trees are very important because they provide um, nutrients to the soil organisms, both from the litter, which falls to the soil surface, and also underground, the root systems. They're continually, as the trees are photosynthesizing, they're pumping out carbon into the soil system and that is feeding the mycorrhizal fungi associated with the roots and in turn that feeds the microbes and in terms of the soil food web they then become food for the soil fauna within the soil so they're vital for fueling the below ground um, engines that are driving these systems. And what about uh, the dead trees? Do they play a role? The, the dead trees are very important as well because they provide nutrient sources for uh, wood decay fungi. So they're another important nutrient source. And uh, we also have students looking at the role of um, dead wood as um, a sink for some of the transfer of nitrogen on harvested sites. Um, and these stores of nitrogen can then be used by regenerating seedlings. Um, one of the key issues of our times is um, how uh, biodiversity affects ecosystem functioning. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on how the effects of the STEMS treatments would affect the relationship between diversity and functioning? Yeah, that's one thing we're trying to answer when we're um, performing this study is there's an awful lot we don't know um, about the diversity below ground. We can only, we've only been able to culture 1% of the organisms in the soil. Um, and so we don't have a great idea about what this spectacular um, diversity of organisms is doing. Um, and it, but it's really important to to understand um, the diversity and what the, the functional roles are. We know that there are specific organisms vital for example, cycling of nitrogen. And without those organisms, we wouldn't get nitrification. Um, but there's an awful lot that we don't know and we're trying to, um, it's only been in the last 10 years we now have methods to enable us to look at some of these organisms and what they are doing functionally. What are some of the challenges in studying um, below ground organisms in an environment such as uh, the STEM site? Well, just um, in terms of uh, sampling locations, but also 
how to study these organisms. Up until a few years ago, we could only look at ones that we could grow on agar plates. Whereas now we have a lot of biochemical molecular techniques which are enabling us to look at the whole diversity below ground. So we know, for example, now in that teaspoon of soil, we have anything from 23 to 55,000 species of bacteria, 4,000 archaea, um, 1,000 fungal species. Just what are these organisms all doing? And we need to know if we lose some of these organisms, how that affects the ecosystem.